welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, um, before this video, you know, gets into the full swing of things, I do have a few things I want to say. This is the first post-audio recording in a while, so not everything will sync up, obviously, that's how post-audio works. Um, and I'll, I guess I'll talk about a few things before that. As you can see, I have the DLC armor, um, and at the very end of the episode, so if you want to see me getting the DLC armor, stick to the very end. Because I do have a little fun montage of that. Because uh, I didn't want to spend a full like 20-30 minute episode getting a bunch of stuff. Which really didn't need to be in its own video. Honestly, it's just a few extra clothes. Um, The Phantom outfit, which I'm wearing right now. Gives you, uh, give, like every single bit of the armor gives you an attack up, attack buff. So, that's great to have. Um, Not like it really, well I guess it does help me a bit in this episode. But we'll get into that later. Uh, the Tingle outfit. I don't wear it at all during this entire video because it doesn't help me. Uh, it only speeds you up at night, so um, that's the full set bonus, and that's cool, but, you know, again, doesn't really help me. Anyway, the reason why audio needed to be post-recorded this time, because I was, I was hoping that, uh, I think the last episode I did post-audio was like episode 9 or something crazy, crazy far back like that. Um, anyway, the last time I did that was because I wasn't proud of my commentary. But, uh, this time it's because, uh, God, I use a blue snowball to record my audio, right? And there are a few settings on the back of the blue snowball. There's a one setting, a two setting, and a three setting. The one setting, I believe, is for, uh, pop filter, people with a pop filter, so they can be a bit farther away from the mic. Uh, and the two setting is what I usually use. It's pretty much, like, has a pop filter already into it, it like, in it. But uh, I also use a pop filter over that, making the audio sound a bit more crisp. Because if I didn't, it would sound um, a bit, you know, you could hear a bit more of the background noise. And that's, that's no good. <laughs> Sorry, I've been playing a bit of Sonic recently. Yeah, let's not talk about that, though. And then three is like for, um, I guess if you only have one mic and you want to do a podcast or something. It, it, it um, the Blue Snowball has like multiple like different panel type things. And, uh, on the front, it has a panel. On the back, it has a panel. First of all, that's where you can get one of the outfits. You'll see it later. Not important. Anyway, it has, like, uh, panels on the front and panels on the back, uh, which takes in the audio. And, uh, depending on which setting you have it on, it will take in, uh, different audio from different back and front panels. And 3 does both. So, that's just not a good setting all around for me, to be honest. Um... So yeah, I used two, and I had it on one. And, you know, obviously, since you can be farther away uh, when you have the one setting on, that means if you're really close, which I have to be when I'm recording on the two setting, it gets really loud. <laughs> and uh, all the all the stuff you're hearing right now, all the inflection in my voice, it, um, it was cringeworthy, to be honest. It was awful. I... Did not, uh, I couldn't even listen to it. It was hurting my ears editing. So, I decided, you know what, I I think it's about time that I just re-record it, see what was wrong with the audio, and then I figured it out. Uh, so that's cool. Anyway, as you saw, there was a loading screen when I entered Hyrule Castle. Uh, that's because there's actually a, maybe I should talk about why I'm in Hyrule Castle right now. That That's probably a better idea. Um... There's an item that I want to get, which there's no better time to really get it, and I want to show it off uh, before, you know, the last episode of the game, or the last episode of this Let's Play, so that's why I'm here right now. Right here's a bombable wall. There's a lot of these in this uh, in this dungeon. Uh, I'm going to talk about the dungeon a bit more, a bit more, a bit farther in, but, um, yeah, just, there was, there was a cutscene when you enter Hy Hyrule Castle. I cut that out because, you know, you probably don't want to... Probably don't want to see that until the until the very last episode. Right here, there are a few ways you can tackle this. Uh, the way I'm going to be tackling it is by putting a bomb in there, blowing it up, because that doesn't waste any of your resources. Uh, you can use stasis, which is what I usually use uh, before I knew this this tactic. Uh, and you can just stasis it and then hit it with a big a big weapon, and then you go super far, super fast. But it also takes. Uh, some of the durability of your weapon, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. Really wasting a bit of extra time by using the bombs isn't a big deal. So, you know, don't ne you shouldn't necessarily worry about, uh, you know, wasting time, even though you're using the bombs. 
Over here, you can get a Korok, but because I don't have an egg and I can't drop it in there, um, you know, I'm just gonna pick up the hard-boiled eggs. Goodbye, Korok. I'm sorry. Uh, also, if you did actually take damage to this water here, it would heal you. So that's cool. That's, uh, nice and fancy. Now, since I already recorded this episode, I know it's gonna be a bit shorter than usual, which is... I mean, it's still not that short. It's around 50 minutes long. That's a decent episode length, honestly. Um, I, you know, I thought it was going to be a bit longer. I knew that the thing I wanted uh, wasn't that far in. And I knew exactly where it was, so it's not like I was going to have a hard time finding it or anything. Um, but didn't think it think it'd take only like 50 minutes. So, um, you know, over here, uh, if you take a right when you walk in, You'll see that there's a Moblin over there. Now, you can use Majora's Mask to make this a whole lot easier. Uh, but that would kind of ruin the fun of the video now, wouldn't it? Still, <laughs> I don't have a very hard time with these guys. Saw me anyway. Um, using a two-handed weapon right there is probably not the smartest idea. Uh, I do believe... That takes a lot of damage. Well. Anyway, I do believe I switch um pretty soon. Uh, over to my 40, right? Yeah, my Guardian Sword plus plus. Uh, by the way, the area you saw me starting in earlier, um, that was a shrine I took care of uh, because it was it was like a test of strength, and that's always boring, and I don't think that's necessary to put into the video. So, you know, that was there. This is a Royal Guard Spear. That is really good, actually. So I'm going to drop the crappy 10 thing that I have pick that up and uh, there's something special in here I will remember that for later on but now like right now I don't think I need it that much so uh, I'm out I guess now if you take the left that I was supposed to take but I took a right because I actually don't remember I guess I wanted to show it off or something you'll enter the lockup over there there's a chest we'll be able to get that soon enough so let that leave your conscious for now. Again, here's a bombable wall. They are very prevalent here. Now, I don't quite get this. So, you have to shoot that eye through that little hole in the, uh, in the cell. And then, it, it turns off, or it turns, yeah, it turns off the lever, the lev, the leveler, what, the lever that, uh, is keeping you in. I don't get it. I really don't, but... I'm just gonna kill this guy. He's not really... Uh, too difficult, to be honest. I think I came in here... Like, I thought this was gonna be a bit harder. But, um, I actually do think that I came in here pretty prepared. Uh, and the... The Phantom Outfit definitely helped. Uh, so I would recommend picking that up. This is a Blizzard Rod. Um, I have a sword that does the exact same thing. But, just for, uh, for fun, you know, I'm just going to pick it up and show it off because there is a Moblin over here. So, it just freezes him. Nothing too special. Uh, I am going to go pick up that weapon that I left again because, you know, uh, the rods don't necessarily have the best um, durability and they're kind of useless. He can't do anything, but uh, I'm still going to kill him. Materials, you know? It's a rough life, my man. Besides, I'm going to need them later, so um, I'll take them. They can also be good selling fodder, so... Eh. Does selling fodder make sense? I think it does. Maybe. Who knows. That's a royal bow. Uh, that's something I already have. Now, I already know what's going to happen. Haha, <laughs> post-recording, am I right? I'm so sad that I post-recorded. I already have one of those. Uh, so it's really not that special and besides I do want to come back here and pick up the weapon that I just dropped because it helps with opening uh, Not opening breaking um, big crates like that right there. So I'm just gonna drop that and head on back to pick up my my beloved weapon The royal or not <laughs> the knight's claymore. I almost said the royal claymore that m like that must have a massive amount of output if the Royal Claymore is even a thing. I don't know if it is. Baby! Probably not, but... 
Now, if you take a left here, uh, or I already got that chest. Right here is where the thing is that I want, and that looks a bit weird. This is a Stalmox. I've already seen one of these guys before. Uh, they were wandering around, and I said, Oh, I'm not going to deal with this guy now, because I'm going to deal with him later. This is that later that I was talking about. So, he can pull out his ribs and throw them at you. That's all fine and good. I think that's the only thing he can do other than, like, trying to slam his hands. Other than that, he's pretty much just a normal Hinox, and that's, uh, it's cool. It's alright. I don't think I've actually battled a Hinox in this, uh, which is sorely depressing, so I'm gonna have to deal with that soon. Uh, now, what you want to do is you want to shoot him in the eye. I like going with bomb arrows because that's a bigger radius. And then you have to attack his eye because if you just attack his body, it's going to do absolutely nothing. So attacking the eye is the best thing to do. Here, I'm not going to kill him because I thought he had more attacks, but uh, apparently not. Apparently not. Fun fact, around here is where I decided to do post-commentary because uh, I was like, oh, come on, you can do more than that. And I said it in that exact, like, that exa that exact inflection, that exact same, uh, loudness in my voice, and it sounded like, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it, because it's gonna, like, break your ears, but it sounded like I, w I went to the mic, and I just yelled in it. Ah, <sighs> God. Audio level one, am I right? Right there, that's another normal Hinox attack. Pretty powerful. He can also block his eye. He learns just like a normal Hinox. Right there, just kill him. Fun fact, they actually do die in the daytime too. They're like the stull ho uh, skull horses and whatever they're called. I forgot already. It's a great Thunderblade. Something I don't need because I already have the normal... Th well, I'll pick it up anyway because I have the normal Thunderblade. Uh... I think there was something else. Yeah, the Royal Broadsword, which is great. Uh, I'm going to drop the Great Thunderblade for that. That's what I was thinking because, you know, it's great. And in this chest, oh my god, in this chest, it's one of the best items in the entire game. The one OP thing that I really wanted to grab from here was, drum roll please, the Hylian Shield. That's all right. They wouldn't remove it from the game. My inventory is full. All right. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> well. I have two of those, so it doesn't matter. But I want this Hylian shield in my inventory, because this is the best shield in the game. And I promised myself that after uh, after getting through two Divine Beasts, I would come and pick this up. And here I am, picking it up. And it's great. I love the way it looks. It looks so awesome. Oh, my God. It's just so cool. I'm going to be wearing this a lot. Obviously, I'll still give time to different shields and stuff, but... Oh my god, it's just so good. <laughs> anyway... Uh, I'm going to do a few amiibo unboxing... Or, unboxings? <laughs> openings before I... Amiibo crates? I don't know. It's like loot crate. Uh, you could call it loot crate, I guess. I don't know. Not like the subscription service, you know. Uh, anyway, I didn't open up the amiibo uh, this episode. As you can see... I have three tunics of the wind. I still don't have the pants, but I have three tunics of the wind, which is insane. I have no idea how that happened, but uh, <laughs> it happened. Now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Actually, I was gonna spoil it, um, but let's see what I get. So first up, I have. The Sea Breeze Boomerang. It's just a boomerang that does 20. Nothing too special. I'm not a big fan of boomerangs in the first place. Did not mean to open that up a second time. But, uh, it's alright. You can pick it up. It's, again, just a special thing from the Wind Waker Amiibo. So that's all fine and dandy. And in here, we have a Night Shield. Something that's pretty much completely, <laughs> completely useless at this point because... I already have the Hylian Shield, but in the next episode, I don't know actually, I don't know what's going to happen, uh, I think there are a few things that I forgot to do, I forgot to go pick up, uh, I forgot to go do a few things in the Rito area, so I'm probably going to go back there and then continue on on my adventure, uh, but until then, 
you know what? Just enjoy this little uh, this little DLC picking up montage. I don't know what it's called, but I worked on it. It was kind of kind of annoying to do. So enjoy it. <laughs>